Uh, basically, we call it a conference because of the, the comments made by the Honorable Minister Maru from Papua New Guinea regarding, uh, specifically regarding an ox and palm corn beef issue that he had raised. Um, there are, he's mentioned that he's sending us a 14 day notice, etc., uh, to put us on notice regarding this ox and palm corn beef issue to get resolved, otherwise, there's going to be a, uh, some bans put in place, etc. What need to, needs to be put in perspective is, um, and I must clarify this, Fiji has not actually placed uh, any bans on imports of food items from PNG. There are all, no unnecessary restrictions that have been placed on PNG imports. Uh, and obviously this is a matter that would have been resolved uh, a lot sooner because the, po the competent authority in Papua New Guinea uh, called NAKIA is the equivalent of our bi biosecurity issues. And for one, with respect to, specifically with respect to corned beef, from our perspective, um, this is an issue and a matter that was raised in 2014 by, uh, by us, uh, with them. But we in Fiji do not have an importer of that particular brand of corned beef. There is nobody who imports that particular brand of corned beef. And also, when this matter had uh, initially arisen in 2014, at the MSG meet, it was raised also by us. And our competent authority by the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji made the necessary risk assessments, sent it across to Nakia, their competent authority. Now, what has happened since then is there were issues obviously raised by our biosecurity, but they have not come back to us. And I think the, the reasoning behind them not moving ahead was because they informed our biosecurity authority that there was no interest in sending out to Fiji on, in commercial quantities. So the matter lay there, and, and currently as it stands, it's obviously probably sitting at uh, the desk of somebody at Nakia, their competent authority, um, to, to get resolved. But despite that, what has happened is it was raised earlier on, just a little while ago, by the Honorable Minister Maru. And when it was raised, we addressed it. Firstly, through our Honorable Prime Minister at the ACP uh, meet, at a bilateral with their Prime Minister, to see if it could get resolved. Again, this is being done on our own volition. We don't have an importer of that particular brand of corned beef. And it was also raised by my team in Port Villa, again, to see if it could get resolved. This is being done at the Fijian government's expense. What I have done is I have written to the Honourable Minister, again, uh, we have written to him to say that this is something that obviously can be resolved, inviting him to, to a bilateral to see if we can resolve it. Now, all of this falls under the MSG Trade Agreement too. There are processes, obviously, that need to be followed if there are uh, issues that have, have been raised. They have to write to us and then uh, the necessary consultations take place. But not in the, and it's obviously not being done in the MSG spirit. Fiji always does things in the MSG spirit with respect to MSG matters. We have a proper trade agreement in place, a free trade agreement. There are, there are other things that actually do get exported out to, um, to Papua New Guinea. And you know, whilst it's the responsibility of each country to protect the health and safety uh, of human, animal, and plant life, it is also imperative that it uh, that what is undertaken is uh, under proper and, and an established framework, and such as the MSG trade agreement. So the trade agreement actually dictates how you actually deal with these things. Just to put it in the nutshell, as, like I say, in 2014, Nakia still has obviously somebody at Nakia, their competent authority, still has it sitting on their file, and nothing's been done about it. This actually arose probably because there are some small quantities that are being bought in by uh, people who fly in and out. But in order for it to be cleared and bought in through our customs and our immigration and our biosecurity, there has to be an established pathway. Now that established pathway still has not been established, purely because the matter does not sit with us, it sits with the competent PNG authority. The minister obviously um, Chose, he chose to go to the, to the press. We have not received, as of yet, a 14-day notice. But in any event, 
in a true MSG spirit, I have written to him to invite him <coughs> to have a bilateral to see if this matter can't be resolved. They are our trading partners. First and foremost, we deal with all of these things. We all fall under the WTO, but this specific one is under the MSG Trade Agreement 2. We are shortly going to sign MSG Trade Agreement 3. Obviously, the, the measures that take place with respect to any issues that are raised out of that will probably be a little bit uh, more strengthened. But as it stands now, Fiji is ready to have a chat. I've sent a letter to him for a bilateral. Um, it's gone across to him, and then we'll see what happens. But um, I think the last thing I need to say is that it, it'll enable both countries to address the issues. And in, it's in the true Melanesian spirit of cooperation right, uh, and consultation, that's how Fiji has done it. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? So does this also cover the other products? Uh, yes, it does. Um, there's, you know, it, the, Fiji. I think I think I should spell this out. There's never it's uh, never been an interception of their particular. Uh, I think it was Trukai rice and number one biscuits. There's never been an interception for that. Uh, it's surprising to note that these, these products are being claimed to be banned. You know, he has also uh, said that they're going to ban our chicken. Well, I think the information needs to be correct. We currently do not export chicken out to PNG. And the reason why is very simple, because we've had an issue with it. They've placed a blanket ban, from what I understand, on fruit and vegetables and, and, and chicken also. Again, this, this needs to be looked at in terms of what the trade agreement is. Placing blanket bans, you really, you're in, you're in a violation of the MSG Trade Agreement 3. Again, if you're going to do that, you must do it through proper processes of consultation. That consultation, if you're going to place a blanket ban, you must do that. That hasn't taken place either. But Fiji, as I said, we do this in true Melanesian spirit. We do it properly when it comes to us. With other products, we haven't. Those, those products, and they're free and welcome to do it. I think that we've also opened pathways respect to, with respect to lettuce, etc. They are free, lettuce and a few other vegetables. They are free to bring these, uh, to export these uh, things into Fiji, but it's not being utilized. I think it's unfair to, to say that uh, we are banning goods and, and to go into threatening mode. We're not going to do that. You know, we don't respond to those things in such manner. We do it in the spirit of the agreement. Will you be looking to speak to Richard Mann? I can speak to him any time, not, absolutely no problem. But I have officially written to him to say that, uh, you know, invite him for a bilateral to see if he can't get resolved. You must remember, there is no person or no company who has currently applied to import that particular corned beef. This issue is being, it's, it's a huge mountain being made out of an absolute molehill. Now, what it is, is there's a small quantity that people would bring. You would know all, you all would know. Sometimes you bring these things back and forth with, between Pacific Island countries. But in order for our competent authority to ensure that we protect our borders, there needs to be a pathway. The pathway issue still sits with Nakia, which is their biosecurity, equivalent of our biosecurity. It has not been, uh, it, uh, it's not been cleared. So the fact that, that Fiji gets blamed I don't think that's correct. Any questions? So, <clears throat> so the product that is in question is just the corn. Well, it was corned beef that was raised. I think this is where it's, and as I say, it's not being commercial quantities. Is not the question. It's not being. It's not something that's being bought in here in commercial quantities. That's why I told you that it's it's actually to do with. Um, the way it has been put in the PNG by PNG media, I was yes. watching it earlier today, yes. is that it was uh, being exported to Fiji and then it stopped the way they have put it. Well, anything that gets exported to Fiji under the MSG trade agreement, um, yes, of course it's a free trade agreement, but we protect their border security, we respect their laws. And each MSG country respects each other's laws. We have our own biosecurity issues that we need to, everybody needs to comply with also. Whether it's Australia, New Zealand, the USA, Canada, England, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, whoever, at the end of the day. And it's not being bought in commercial quantities. There is no importer. It's a small issue, again, and even for a small issue, the rules are not different for a commercial quantity or for somebody bringing it in 
uh, in their suitcase for a couple of you know, cans for their family. You still have to have a pathway. And the pathway issue at the moment sits with their competent authority, not with uh, biosecurity. Our biosecurity has done what it has to do. There's a risk assessment that actually needs to take place. There were some risks with their thing that they needed to clarify and, and come back to us. And we are ready to establish that. And, my, and might I add, without somebody asking for this particular permit, government, the Fijian government of its own volition has actually done this because it was raised. We have done it of our own volition to establish the pathway, regardless of there being no application for a permit to, to import these things. So the matter really rests with, uh, where, with Nakia, which is their equivalent of our biosecurity. Sir, uh, what, what would you have to say to the comments he's made uh, about trying to negotiate with Fiji over the last 10 years? And until now, nothing's happened. Well, <laughs> again, you know, these are things that uh, obviously we, we must go back to the trade agreement. 10 years for what one particular product? Is that what you're asking me? I don't and think that's... He's mentioned for a few products, including the corn beef, I think. I think uh, we have always been very accommodating. We have always been a country that abides by what it signs. You know, these things come in by, by, by way of our trade agreement, and MSG Trade Agreement 2 is the one that is relative right now. Uh, and uh, all of these things have been at whatever needs to get resolved, gets resolved at the, at the MSG meets. In fact, we raised our issue, I mean, just for a, for a comparison's sake, <coughs> we raised an issue regarding our chicken going into... Uh, Papua New Guinea, and um, it was raised at the last meet that we had, the MSG meet that we had in Port Moresby, and it's something that's still work in progress, really. But now they've got, from what I understand, there's a blanket ban, correct? There's a blanket ban. Again, just putting a blanket ban, you're in violation of the agreement in any event. But it's something that you must do properly. Last 10 years, I think if he's raised the 10 years issue, these are things that are being addressed, that have been addressed. And if you're talking about the, an issue that PNG has a problem, I just told you, we don't have any restrictions. If there is a pathway, there are no restrictions. If you followed the proper processes that you need to, we are, there are no restrictions. We have not played, you know, Fiji has not placed any bans on imports of food items from PNG. And there are oh, no unnecessary restrictions on PNG imports. That's all. You just mentioned on the blanket uh, ban. Uh, how do you think this will affect the uh, I think, and, um, you know, because they've done that, we haven't gone out and <coughs> fired warning shots over their head because they've done that. There are processes to be followed. They, they are, they're, they're a sovereign country. They have a right to do what they want to do. At the end of the day, we respect that. Everybody must respect that. Fiji does respect that. But, you know, there are channels to be followed. Obviously, these things need to be raised at the MSG level. So how... how what sort of effect would this have, if any, on uh, not just trade with Fiji, but also the MSG relationship between Fiji and PNG? I, look, I, uh, I'm a very positive person, and I think the Fiji is a very positive country. We don't look at this in a bad way. As I said, I've put my hand out and I've written to him and I said, please, come and have a bilateral with us and see if we can't resolve this as quickly as possible. And you must remember, and I just mentioned to you, that this is being done at the instigation of the Fijian government. There is no particular importer. In order to ensure that we deal with our MSG brothers in the way that we do with everybody else, in a fair, fair manner, we said, this is fine, no problem. I've written to him and asked him to see if we can have a bilateral to get it resolved. Our relationship um, is fine. I don't think there's a, you know, I don't think that we should paint it as, as there being a problem. Fiji, Fiji and PNG have good relationship. <coughs> They supported us when we um, spoke about the pay surplus issues. They have supported us also. We support them also in the issues. And um, this is something that just needs to be resolved at that, at that particular political high level. And it will be. And as I said earlier on, this is an issue that was raised at prime ministerial level at the ACP meet the last time. And after his letter that he sent to me. And after that letter also, my team that went across to Port Villa then raised it again just to, as to how it how it had actually panned out. But they continued to go back to the old issues that they said, well, we placed a ban on it, etc. If it was in our court, I would direct the necessary authorities here to ensure that it was resolved as quickly as possible. Biosecurity chairman is here. 
The executive chair is here. He will tell you that the issue rests with their competent authority. Just one final question for me, sir. It's uh, all over the PNG media. It's also on ABC or Pacific News. Is Fiji and PNG in a trade war? Absolutely not. I don't think. I think that's uh, uh, press having a field day with something that uh, Minister Maru has raised. He's, uh, you know, I don't think that we're at war with each other. No, absolutely not. Have you spoken to him personally? No, not for uh, well, not for a little while yet. Uh, regarding the oxen palm beef at Con uh, Con beef, uh, basically there has been some work done before. Since, uh, 2013 14, the MSG and uh, basically the import risk assessment was done where the VAT of it, uh, Bajor Fiji was basically in PNG. And based on the findings of the VAT, there were some sanitary issues needed to be addressed by the manufacturer. So from there on, in 2014 meeting uh, with the uh, assistance of Ministry of Trade, the delegation were basically uh, met Nakia and uh, based on uh, discussions, Naki had confirmed that uh, there was no interest to export to Fiji. So from our end, basically, the matter was closed. But this year, there were some discussions by some potential importer, but there's been no request sent by any importer to Fiji or neither by Nakia to Fiji to basically carry out any import risk analysis. And from a company authority's point of view, the response or what we have seen coming out in the media is overwhelming as we have been not appropriately through our channels have been also notified in terms of any potential or proposals for working on the pathway or to establish a pathway from PNG to Fiji. So from um, our point of view, I think there is no work in progress because I think the matter has been with Nakia and Nakia was supposed to come back to us through appropriate channels in terms of notifying if there's any interest. Clarified? Yes. Anybody else? Were there any some uh, some products where at times you face sanitation restrictions or any products that came from PNG? Um, from the boiler team, in in regards to the air freight or sea freight, there has been any, no there has been no restrictions. But I just add on that. Uh, Post-2014 meeting, we opened the pathway for lettuce and cucumber for one of the uh, uh, restaurant chains in Fiji. They've been using it from there. And we also put uh, expression to basically import broccoli, uh, potatoes, uh, uh, prawns, and some other, uh, other agricultural produce, uh, just to open the path and also keep the energy spirit. But uh, there has been no progress from Naki's end. So, um, and Looking at the poultry products, we had also discussed the poultry products, and uh, uh, according to the local uh, exporter, he had basically put an application, but again, there has been no progress. And further to meetings in different forums, we've raised this, but there's been no progress from uh, Nakia's uh, in terms of the export. Just a comment from me, you guys. It's, um, you know, we consider PNG to be a crucial trading partner. We have, this is why we have the MSG issues with all the other MSG countries. They are a crucial trading partner, and we will treat them like a crucial trading partner, like we always have. We're not here to, to have a trade war or whatever it is that you guys have termed it. That's not the case, not at all. You know, we have competent authorities that are involved in all these things, and sometimes these things will crop up, but it's just a normal course of business, really, at the end of the day. They have to protect their quarantine borders, and so do we. It's as simple as that.